What's up everybody? So a couple videos ago when I did the recap of the bronze back cup, um, I made mention about how I'd gone home and poured my own baits the night after the first day because um, I needed those baits. So I, this is just my shed. It's a mess back here, but it doesn't matter. Um, I got a bunch of different molds that I've made out of fiberglass resin. So like this is the one I was talking about in the Simcoe tournament. This is a lot of my drop shot baits. So I've got, uh, you know, various gobies. I've got the crosstail shad, um, the poor boys, eerie darter, uh, the scullby. There's a few different ones. Uh, I have six or seven molds. That's just one of them. Uh, today I'm going to do one for a couple baits that I don't have. Um, I do have a swim bait mold. So like this is one of them here. Uh, it's the X-Zone Swammer. It's a five inch. It's one of my favorite pipe baits. Uh, so I reuse a lot of plastic. Color, ugly, doesn't matter. Pike eat it. Uh, but it's a great way to recycle plastic. So a couple years ago, I started saving all my used plastic and I had over five pounds at the end of the year. Uh, that's not including like what got thrown in the water uh, when the fish jump and whatnot. That's just what I had in my boat saved at the end of the year. So I've saved a ton of money by doing this. Um, I'm going to show you how to make the mold today. So you'll need a pan. Uh, this is a little bigger than the one I normally use. This is the one I normally use here. It's just a Pillsbury pan, cost four or five bucks. Um, you'll need a Pyrex jar. This is four quart, uh, just for mixing your resin. Um, obviously, you want your resin. This is about twenty or thirty bucks, depending where you get it. Uh, comes with some hardener. You'll need to know exactly how much you're using. Um, some super glue to put your baits down. Spoon for mixing. Uh, very simple. So with the resin, so obviously follow the instructions on the can. You'll need a certain amount of drops of the hardener per ounce of the resin. So a good way to do it is to take your baits, line them up in here, fill it with water so you know exactly how much you're going to need. Pour the water into your cup so you know where you're at. So I know, because I've already done it, um, I'm going to use this entire can today, so I'll use the entire thing hardener. If you're using a smaller pan, only need half the can, you'll probably need to measure the amount of drops. I was going to dump the whole thing in because that's what I'm going to do. So today's baits, um, I'm going to do a jig chunk, which I've never done before, and uh, a swim bait. This one's a spark shad. Um, a couple baits that I throw a lot of, so why not have a mold for them? Um, you do want something with a flat back if you're doing a single pour mold. Um, both these do have a flat back. Both could be a hand pour bait, so that's what we're going to do. So, like I said, you want to know exactly how much resin you're going to have. And what we're going to do is we're going to want to super glue the baits down. So the reason we're going to want to super glue them is so they don't float up. So give it a bit for the glue to set. All right, so baits are glued down. Just give them a little check, make sure they're solid there. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna dump, say whatever amount you need. I hope that doesn't screw me over. Door blew shut. I spelled it. <laughs> Whatever. So now I know I need all this hardener in there. Whole thing. I'm going to do some stirring wool. I hope that doesn't cost me. It shouldn't be too much, but certainly make me look stupid. All right. So what we're going to do is when we pour, 
don't pour directly onto the baits. You want to let it flow around the baits. I think I'm going to be all right for a mount still. Cutting it close. All that in there. Make sure your baits are submerged. I'm going to have some resin to clean up in the meantime. But So that's that. So it's all filled up. It's going to get kind of hot and it's gonna take about an hour and a half to dry. Um, you'll see it's gonna shrink a little bit and pull in. That's why you want your baits kind of off to the side a little bit. Um, because as it hardens, it is gonna shrink and kind of pull in a little bit. I'm gonna get this on a more level surface to dry out. Uh, probably go play Fortnite for an hour and a half and I'll be back as soon as it's done and show you what's up. All right, so we've given it about an hour and a half. Uh, you can see, like I said, how it's kind of separated from the edges a little bit. Um, might need a little bit to get it removed there, just a tiny little pry. It should pop right out now. Um, so you see the baits are in there. The baits are ruined now, like you cannot use those baits again. Um, but we're going to pull these baits out. Uh, some of them will be stuck in there a little bit. You have to do a little bit. Of work to get uh, to get them out. But we'll work on that, getting them pulled out. So you can use something fine to just kind of pick at the little pieces that got stuck. Most of it pulled out fairly well. I was using a little drill bit or a nail or so. I made a mistake of rushing it. Uh, normally I'd recommend leaving it overnight rather than the hour and a half. I thought the hour and a half would be enough. Uh, it wasn't for the one corner. I'm not too concerned about that. It's one bait. I still have two of the craw molds and uh, three of the swim bait molds that are all in good shape. So it'll give you a good idea and I'll show you what to do with pouring now. So first thing you're going to want to do with your mold is grease it. Uh, a lot of people use Pam. You can brush olive oil in there. I just use the Bang garlic spray. It's oily enough. You just want something so that it helps it pull out of the mold better when it's done. And then you want some baits. So I just use a Pyrex cup. Um, so these are all just a bunch of old ripped up baits. Uh, I'm going to keep it all to the same type of plastic for now. So these are all Berkeley Craws. Uh, a couple different colors, but it's mostly green pumpkin. There's a little bit of blue. Um, if you rip them up, it'll just melt quicker. Um, just, throw. just for the sake of having enough of the same plastic right now, I'm going to use these. Normally, I would wait till I had more. Um, these are all Berkeley Craws. And. Uh, can't remember which this one is, but same type of plastic and maybe add a little extra orange to it. So you're going to want to microwave it and you're going to want to have ventilation. So I've got both the doors open here. I'm going to throw a mask on. Please don't use your family microwave. I got a microwave here. I got off Kijiji for 20 bucks um, that I use specifically for this. So I'm going to put her in. Put it in for two minutes. I won't need the full two minutes, but that's what I've got for now. Just keep an eye on it. Check it up to the minute mark and give it a little stir with something. See here, it's starting to bubble. Um, give it a little stir, get the air out, mix it up a little bit better. Brush some of that extra plastic off. 
get her back in. This will probably need another 30 seconds. Still kind of bubbly. Mix it out. Now you've got a good liquid. You want to give it slow pour. Let it spread its way out to the rest of the mold. So now we're going to give it about five minutes to cool down and uh, we'll come back and check on them. All right, so I've given the bait some time to cool. Um, we're going to start pulling. So you can use just finger pressure to get it started and uh, just pull it right out. So there now, got a nice craw trailer. Perfect. Nice green pumpkin blue color. Um, find the cup to set to the side. Set the side here for now. Pop the other one out. Um, it's a little greasy because of the spray. So if you need to, um, you can use something just to pull and get it started. Get underneath it gently. Very good. So there, another craw trailer. There's little imperfections and stuff in it just from over pouring. You can cut them off, no problem. Um, a nice craw trailer. Uh, let's check the swim baits out and see how they did. You want to be gentle where it's narrowed down. Um, obviously, like there are some little imperfections that I can snip away on here um, but now I've got a nice kind of goby swim bait so now I'm gonna try pouring white swim baits uh, see how they go so aside from saving your own plastic to use um, one of the things I do too is I look for like bargain bin stuff so these are pure white craws uh, in a, like a two dollar bargain bin i'm not going to use the pure white craw um, i know down in the states and stuff like bed fishing like that's a big thing but i'm not going to use them up here um, but for two bucks i can make 15 bucks worth of swim baits for nothing so i'm going to get these out get the scissors out just to Snip them up a little bit again just so it melts quicker Okay, nice smooth consistency there you can tell there's not much salt in these ones Let's pour started so I'm going to save a couple of these just to show you how to do a two layered um, bait. I'm going to add some smoky color to the top of the one. Alright, so I've let these swim baits cool for a little bit. Um, to do the two layer, you don't have to do anything special. The heat from the melted plastic when you pour the second layer will actually mold them together all right so this plastic should just peel out of the cup um, i'm going to set it aside to use on another bait and grab something for here so i've got a little bit of off colored white um, just from previous melting that i'm going to put in um, as kind of a base and then here i've got some smoke gold and black fleck um, drop shot worms here that I don't really use. Hopefully this should be enough plastic. And it's going to provide kind of a second layer two-tone 
bake. So I'll nuke these up. Make sure you use an oven mitt. Stuff gets warm. Stir it up. Four. Okay. Give that a minute to rest and we'll come back and check it out. Gave it some time to cool. I'll pull these out. Have a peek at the two tone. Be a little careful. So you can see some stuff I'll snip off. Um, but that's essentially what you're looking at now with the two tone bait. Nice white belly, kind of a different color profile at the top. A lot of that stuff will just be able to peel right off. When it's thinner like that, you just got to be careful you're not pulling too hard. You just kind of grab it and pull. Alright guys, so that's that. We're finished up. Um, obviously I made a mistake not letting this sit long enough. If anything, I hope that just goes to show you don't rush it. Leave it overnight. Uh, I've got plenty of mold, so I'm not really too worried about losing the one craw. Um, but if anything, again, I hope it shows you not to rush it. So like our final products, it's like we've got that two-tone spark shad. Um, nice, soft action. It's a good one. Um, did the green pumpkin and blue. Kind of a goby color spark shad swim bait. And uh, we got our craw trailer. Now it does everything, like all the little textures, the ribs, the little bumps. Uh, like normal and uh, I'm gonna pair this one up on one of my favorite jigs there and uh, perfect we got a nice nice chunk trailer and uh, I'm happy with that so again guys thank you for watching uh, I'm gonna leave a list of all the stuff you need down below check it out I'll put some videos up here as usual don't forget to like share subscribe I'll see you next time and thank you for watching